Hey everybody, uh, this is Russ Curtis, licensed clinical mental health counselor. And I've got um, a video out with the formulas for determining sensitivity and specificity, but I wanted to show, um, just to have a general concept of this idea and to understand what it's trying to tell us, particularly as it relates to true positive and false negatives, which is what you're hearing a lot about now with, um, with uh, COVID and, uh, and testing results and so forth. But I'm gonna do this in a mental health format as we look at kind of suicidal ideation. And just keeping in mind that sensitivity of a test is the accuracy of a cutoff score in detecting the people who belong in a particular category, okay? So if we're using something like a depression inventory, a depression, depression assessment, um, the sensitivity is that we're capturing, that we set the cutoff score that when somebody takes that test and a group of people take the test, we're capturing, <laughs> capturing is not the right word, we're detecting all the people who are, um, have uh, depression, okay? Now, specificity is the accuracy of a cutoff score in excluding those without the condition, okay? So typically with specificity, if we increase the cutoff score for a depression scale, meaning the higher the score, the more depression they have, um, we are going to decrease the sensitivity. So we're gonna miss some people that do actually have depression but we are going to make sure that there's nobody um, within uh, the, um, the score that don't have depression uh, that fit within that category, okay? So I know that's a little confusing sometimes, and, and there is a calculation, you can see my video on that. And sometimes you'll see that when they're talking about the reliability of the tests is they'll actually give um, the sensitivity and specificity percents, uh, you know, for that test. But let's look at what this means in terms of true positive and false negative, because this is, this is something you see, and just to understand the general concept, if we had a depression inventory, so we've got test results up here. Now let's say we actually know, we've interviewed the client, um, we've interviewed uh, with their permission, a uh, close uh, relative to the person, and uh, we've done a really good intake and we actually know if they're suicidal or not suicidal. Okay, so this is actuality here. This is what the test result is telling us, okay? So here are the test results saying, yes, they are suicidal. And based on our intake and our interview and all that, we know that they actually are suicidal, then that would be considered true positive, okay? But let's say the test results said that they are not suicidal when we actually know that they are suicidal based on the intake and interview, that would be a false negative, meaning they tested negative for suicidal ideation, but that's false, okay? So, and that's how I've got it written here, it's just they tested not suicidal, but actually is suicidal. All right. So then down here, we've got test results saying, yes, suicidal, but actually not suicidal. That's a false positive. Test results said, yes, we actually know it's not, it's a false positive. So tested suicidal, but actually is not, false positive. The true negative, tested not suicidal, and we actually know they're not, that's the true negative, okay? So typically what you see is when you increase a test score. So if, if we take that depression instrument I was talking about and we said, hey, we're gonna wanna do a more thorough interview with somebody that scored um, 65 or higher on this test, just a random number. Um, uh, and then we decided, hey, you know what? We're capturing too many people in that 65 or we're detecting too many people who are not really um, suicidal, okay? They're just down or blue and they're somehow testing positive for this. So we're gonna increase the cutoff score to 75. We would de decrease the sensitivity, meaning we're probably gonna miss somebody with severe depression, but we're gonna make sure that at, at, the, at a 75 score that we are capturing folks who really truly do have suicidal ideation, 
Okay, so I'm hoping this helps. Uh, let me know in the comments. And I've got a couple more videos coming out uh, related to reliability and correlation coefficients. Talk to you soon.